Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be answering another question in the spirit of doing this every single day for the next 30 days to see how the YouTube algorithm treats me. Anyways, we're going to go over to the email and Manny R asks, what can I do to improve the coloration of my SPS in my reef tank? Now, uh, there's a lot of different things we could talk about when it comes to improving your SPS. I'm just going to focus on the water parameters and uh, a couple tips for lighting and hopefully that will guide you in the right direction. Uh, so when it comes to SPS, uh, the two water parameters that really determine coloration are going to be your nitrates and your phosphates. Now of course uh, there are minor elements that you can check on an ICP test to determine like boron and stuff like that. but We're going to focus on just the water parameters that the average reefer is testing on a weekly basis. So your nitrates and phosphates uh, what you want to make sure you're doing is you're not bottoming those levels out of course you don't want to be zero when it comes to uh, nitrates and phosphates because you end up getting dyno and most likely paling or bleaching out your corals and then obviously you don't want to go too high because then you'll grow uh, algae in the tank which will then in turn suck up the available nitrates and phosphates and then basically starve your corals of nutrients so you want to stay within a pretty basic line. For me personally, I recommend for uh, most people to stay between 3 to 5 ppm of your nitrates. And when it comes to phosphates, 0.07 to 0.15. Uh, I personally like to stay about 0.1. And uh, you guys have seen the videos that I fluctuated really high and really low and, and, and try different things out to see how the tank reacts. And uh, I find that that's a pretty good set point for me and I get good coloration. Now, when it comes to your nitrates and, nitrates and phosphates, Staying at those levels for a couple days is not going to be good enough. You need to stay consistent. So that means you need to consistently test. So it doesn't have to be every day. It can be every few days. Just get in there and test and then adjust your feeding or if you're dosing nitrates and phosphates, of course, adjust uh, you know what you're dosing based on what your, your levels are. So you got to be consistent for weeks and weeks, if not months at a time, to really get good coloration in a reef tank. Uh, your best bet is to always stay consistent because... What happens is if you end up bottoming out your nutrients and they go to zero, you're going to end up getting, uh, you know, you're going to pale out or vice versa. If you get a lot of nutrients, you're going to get darker corals. And then it just takes a long time to get those levels where they need to be. And then it takes even longer for your coral to adjust and go back to what it should actually look like. So nutrients is very important. And I recommend for anybody with SPS and even with other types of corals is just be consistent when it comes to testing uh, and staying within those levels and focusing on that and not letting it get to any extreme is really your best bet for continued success in coloration. Trust me, here in the 300, I have let it bottom out and I've done many things that have really cost me uh, a lot of a lot of money actually. Uh, not letting corals uh, look the way they should. Of course, I don't want to sell anything that doesn't look good and uh, I've lost a lot of time and a lot of money playing with those nutrients, but hey, it is what it is, right? So. The next thing you want to focus on for water parameter wise is going to be your alkalinity. You don't want big fluctuations in alkalinity when it comes to coloration because it adds stress to the coral. Uh, and then if you add uh, excess lighting to alkalinity spikes, uh, even more stress. So uh, try to keep your alkalinity stable. Personally here in the 300, I like to stay around 9, 9.5. It's a pretty good range for me. It grows really well and I don't have any issues with that. Now, the last thing you want to focus on is your lighting. Now, of course, there's a ton of different lights. I've grown SPS on uh, like ship box lighting, like uh, Chinese black boxes, SPS, SB reef light, all that kind of stuff on the 125. I grew SPS no problem. And now I use Radions and Kessels. Again, no issues with that. And uh, you know, T5s and all that kind of stuff. So uh, as long as you have a pretty good spectrum light, it doesn't really matter what brand you're going with. As long as you're getting the spectrum that you're looking for, and you can verify that with a PAR meter. Um, and the Senai Reef is what I personally use for my PAR meter. So as long as you're getting a pretty good spectrum and you're not blasting the coral or vice versa, giving them not enough light, you're going to be okay. Now, when it comes to PAR, I like to stay between 250 and 350 when you're just starting out. And that's what I recommend for anybody getting in the SPS. 250 to 350 is a good range. Now, of course, some corals like to have more light and uh, corals will adapt to higher light as time goes on. For example, in the 300 here, I have a ATL Blue Clover who started off as a frag at, uh, it's in the middle right rock structure, started off at about 500-ish uh, par, and now it's out of the surface of the water. It's over 1,000 par. It's doing fine, of course. I wouldn't just throw it into that level at first. It grew to that and it adapted. So my point is, if you start at a basic range of 250 to 350, it's really easy to get into SPS, make them happy, and then you can adjust from there. If you want to add more lighting as you go, you can. Um, if you guys notice, I have a pretty higher, I guess it is a higher level, level alkalinity, and I run, I definitely run higher par on my systems because my goal isn't so much the perfect coloration. 
even though I would like that. My goal is to grow as much coral as fast as I can because I got to keep up with the demand on the website and sales. So anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. Try to keep it as you know, short as possible. We're like five minutes in, but uh, that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the comment section and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.